อันนี้ for example เออ for example โอเคไม่ต้อง stop เนี่ยโอเคโอเคไม่ต้องทำดูวิธีสิ่งเอ่อ Uh, maybe I could share my screen. Is that fine? Uh, how 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 can I see the to the technical support, right? Yes. Did you have a question for me? Yeah. Uh, can, can I share my own screen? Uh, yes. So you will be able to uh, share screen. I have to stop my share, uh, and yeah. then you can share. So I'll just stop mine so you can share. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I will share my screen. Technology makes life easier. I somehow make it changing. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it's kind of very short. Could you see a screen now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because then um, I made a very short um, introduction of our panel. So um, oops, we have to wait. I think we can wait for some one or two minutes. Then we'll start. Yeah. Oh. We are the Mr. Zhang Zixin. Yeah, we have to. I think we have to wait one or two minutes. Is that fine? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's ten thirty in Beijing time, right? Yes. Ten thirty p.m. Yeah, but it's fine. No. It's. Uh, is a thing, right? Four, four half, right? In, in burning, yeah. No, I I mean for burning, burning. Now I'm best in burning now actually. <laughs> yeah. mm. It's a four thirty p.m. right now. Yeah. Good. Ah, uh, we are is uh, I think with the contact. We can still wait one or two minutes, then we'll start. I suppose um, we can start now. I don't know where okay. I am. Um, it's Mr. Zhang, so we just start. Um, before that, I made a very short introduction, as you see from screen, to show the general information about our chair. So um, we have two chairs, but another chair, Ani, uh, he's not able to join in us. So I will share this um, um Searching along, but I think it's all okay. <laughs> we only three of us here. So, um, our room names are uh, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi, yes. But actually, the room room, I'm really looking forward to meet you in person somewhere in Berlin, in Paris, or in Xiamen. And we have three presenters, they have all pre record. I think we can um, have this um, presentation first. So I 
have already looked through all the present all these three presentations pre-recorded presentations so and i do we have one hour for in our session so i have made a, a short agenda for our uh, session so we maybe have 10 minutes it's kind of warm up or self introduction to introduce ourselves to each other maybe we can build some potential cooperation or networking in the future. Then we will have half an hour for presentations one by one. I think we can just use the pre-record. Then one go, goes one by one. Then after the all the pre presentations was done, then we will have um, about 20 minutes to have a kind of um, round table discussions. I think many four of us, me and Anna, Yang Fan and maybe Xue Ting could join in. So we only had four participants. Then we can have some um, discussions or exchange ideas, exchange. So I also list uh, three questions for our to be discussed. For example, anyway, not limited to these um, three questions. For example, what are the key challenges for improving the open resilience? And what do we need to do for improving the urban resilience, resilience. And uh, what is our common understanding or common statement about that? So maybe we could have some short, very short comment or some ideas or some you know, input to these questions. Of course, if we have some more further questions or other questions, we can just discuss after presentations. Because I look through all the three discussion um, presentations, they are all linked to the urban resilience. So I think we can have a very short uh, productive discussions about that. Maybe we can write some papers together or if possible. Yeah. So um, I would like to introduce myself first. <laughs> if possible, yeah. Um, oh, I think it's not, it's not good for me. Maybe you can lady first, right? <laughs> Anna, could you introduce yourself first maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Anna? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, what do you want to, uh, what do you want me to do? Uh, could you have a um, short introduce, introduction for yourself, self introduction of yourself? Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, what are you doing now? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, I am a researcher, scientist and teacher uh, at the high school of real estate professions in Paris, uh, but I worked uh, more than 20 years in Latin America, in Colombia, about risk, risk management, vulnerability in the ends, mountain ends. And uh, now I'm working in Paris and uh, more particularly uh, about uh, uh, density, vulnerability, uh, resilience, man, um, risk management related in, in the last months related with uh, with uh, COVID, mm -hmm. COVID-19. And so my presentation uh, will, will, be, uh, will be directed to uh, risk management in front of COVID context in urban context. And more particularly um, in a context of office and habitation, uh, rooms, and uh, so a um, um, kind of kind of of living in a context of risk of sanitary risk. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Yeah, thank you, Anna. Maybe uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, fine. It's your turn, I think. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Professor She. Uh, it is well organized this session. Uh, well prepared. Thank you for your organization. I'm Yang Fan Li from Xiamen University, China. I'm a professor at the College of Environment and ecology. I focus on the 
coastal urbanization and ecosystem resilience. Uh, I make efforts on how to use the resilience theory uh, into the uh, science and the policy interface, how to use the resilience theory, resilience thinking into the coastal integrated coastal management. Okay, uh, I'm very happy to join this session and I want to collaborate uh, with you or uh, join into the discussion and the future collaboration. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Yang Fan. Yeah, I think uh, I also uh, would like to introduce myself. Um, my name is Bing Xue uh, from China. Currently, um, I'm working as uh, I'm based in Berlin, working at the Technical University of Berlin uh, with a focus on environmental and recycling technologies and circular economy, focus on waste management. Before joining in uh, TU Berlin, uh, I was a fellow working at the Institute for Advanced Sustainability Studies based on Potsdam, a very small city, a nice city close to Berlin. And I also working for, I'm working for the Chinese Academy of Sciences as a professorship uh, with a focus on circular economy, industrial ecology, and the long run sustainability. So uh, I spent some, actually I spent some energies in doing the research about the urban system, but much more focus on urban, you know, we call the human land system in urban context or urban sustainability. I do not have too much knowledge about the urban resilience, but I think maybe um, we could have some very disciplinary discussions about the urban sustainability and how to improve the urban resilience. For example, currently we have very serious urban flood in China. We also have such kind of floods in Germany and somewhere else. So I think maybe this is also important for us to understand the urban resilience from theory to practice. So I'm really looking forward to having some productive discussions with all of us, and then we'll see how to cooperate in the future. Yeah, this is uh, my self introduction. <laughs> uh, maybe, uh, yeah, we can turn to the three presentations. Is that fine? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Then, uh, hi, technician supporter, Sala. I don't know. Should Can I... everyone see my screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think perfect. we can. I think we'll continue to um, present the pre recorded uh, um, presentation now. Yes, okay. I'll just. Um... That's all, just one by one, I think. Yes. I'll yeah. just check if we, we have some. No, no, no voice. voice, no voice. I'm so sorry, I'll start that again with voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Is, uh, is Xiang Ziyuan also from your team? Yes. Okay, great. She's my PhD student. Oh, that's great. Okay. Hello, my name is Zhang Zixing. I'm from China yeah. University. I'm now a senior student uh, in College of Urban and Environmental Sciences. And today, the research I'm bringing to everybody is the new conception of six dimensions of the resilience city. First, the introduction is that what is resilience? And I will introduce the conception of resilience city in uh, in two aspects. First is a narrow sense, and second is a broad sense. 
Resilience derives from the Latin word resilio, meaning return to the original state. With the evolution of times, the concept has been widely applied to different dis disciplines. In the mid 19th century, the term resilience was applied to describe the deformation and restoration of metals. And from the 1915s to the 1980s, resilience was used in Western psychological research to describe the state of recovery from tra trauma. In 1973, ecologist Holling first applied to the idea of resilience to ecological system, believing that resilience is the ability of an ecosystem to survive or recover quickly after being disturbed by nature or human. Since 1990s, the idea of resilience has been gradually introduced into the study of human ecology from nature ecology, in which the theory of resilient city has been formed with the study of cities as a research object. And now when we search cities in China national knowledge infrastructure and we will find that we can only find 551 results with the keywords cities and resilience. In terms of time, times most studies on res resilient city in China started in 2012 and the number of relevant topics increased rapidly in 2018 and 2019. However, on the whole, the Chinese academic community is still in the conceptual framework construction and the theoretical exploration stage of urban resilience. resilience. And no well-formed research paradigm and system has yet to be formed. A considerable proportion of articles introducing the research progress and thoughts of foreign countries occupy a large proportion. From the perspective of research content, most of the current studies on res resilience city in China are still at the qualitative level, and there are few studies on the more critical and core quantitative assessments. In narrow sense, the study of urban resilience is mostly refers to the ability of urban disaster prevention and mitigation, namely disaster resilience. However, uh, today I want to talk about the broad sense, which means urban resilience really refers to the ability of a city to maintain its structure and function and to recover in the face of an emergency or external impact. It is mainly characterized by the variability and diversity of its spatial structure and social ecosystem. There are three research paradigms, including research paradigm based on the landscape ecology, and the second is based on the spatial elements and forms, and the third is combining with psych physical space and social me uh, mechanism. And now I want to introduce two important cases to you. The first is Japan, and the second is Shanghai. As a developed uh, economy ravaged by natural disasters, Japan is not only at the forefront of world in post-disaster emergency rescue, but also integrates many advanced ideas in pre-disaster planning. Compared with traditional spatial planning, Japan's joint territory planning lays more emphasis on the combination of action plans and priority allocation. That is, in the case of failure of certain urban functions, what sources should be more Mobilized, mobilized and what corresponding measures should be taken to solve the problem. Admittedly, um, this is highly dependent on Japan's small scale of planning, but it is, is still of great reference significance to China's urban plan, which have a serious lack of detailed regulation on the organization setting and a specific action plan. And in the Shanghai cases, we can find that the planning is put forward to protect regional ecological space from ecological network in which river and ocean intersect, water and green blend, and maintain important ecological space elements in Yangtze River Delta. 
Generally speaking, Shanghai as a mega city takes the lead in integrating the concept of resilient city into a master plan, actively copes with global climate change and promote the transformation of production and lifestyle to green, low carbon and livable, which has certain guiding significance. In particular, Shanghai has grasped the main contradictions in different special scales and put forward the operating objective step by step. Now I want to introduce the new system of resilient city by myself. It's the six dimensions of resilient city and it is based on many other scholars' work and I want to summary, uh, make a, summarize it and, and make a new interpretation of them. The six dimensions of resilient city is um, diversity, redundancy, robustness, restoration force, adaptability, and so finally, it's the learning and the transformation. The so first diversity means there are many components with different functions which can be bring more strategies to solve problem increases and improve the ability of the system to resist multiple threats. Because different individuals have different adaptability to different disaster pressures, when the system is composed of diverse divisions, it will form different response to the disturbance and thus become more resilient. And the second is the redundancy. It means uh, the city have more replaceable elements with the same function can increase the reliability of systems through multiple backups. That is the uh, alternative design of some important functions in the city and the construction of standby facilities. When city facing impact to some makes some facilities damages, its function can be made of backup facilities complement or replaced by other systems in order to avoid the collapse of city. And the third is the robustness. It means the ability of the system to resist and respond to external shocks. In a narrow sense, robustness focuses on maintaining the steady state. In a broad sense, robustness includes maintaining the steady state and the state near the steady state under the action of restoring force. And the force is a restoring force. It refers to the reversibility and the reductibility, which enables cities to return to the original structure or function of the system after being packed. And the fifth is adaptability. It means that the system adjusts its own morphological structure or function according to the changes of the environment so as to suit the environment. And the final is a learning and transformation. Uh, ability. It means that city can learn from experience and innovate, innovate. And it's all, uh, I have to admit that the fact that planning and the design will face knowledge shortage when making decisions and as it regards uncertain determinants as a, an opportunity for learning correction, so as to realize physical and institutional adjustment in time to better deal with the next disaster. And finally, the four dimension of resilience was allocated to the four city functions, including public service, ecological recreation, historical heritage, and community residence. And now I want to introduce the relationship between diversity and redundancy. Although diversity and redundancy have some difference in, in goal orientation, they are not completely separate. On the contrary, they are closely related, conceptually overlapping, and in some respects have the same or similar special representation. For example, um, so component A and component B have, uh, have something in common, for, uh, like they all have the function K, so um, the coexistence of function K uh, results in the redundancy of the function. And the diversity means that the same component, like component A, have different functions, including 1 to K, and they all coexist in the same system. And as for the whole system of the six dimensions, I have to say that 
The robustness, restoration force, and adaptability as properties of a city as a whole system in the face of impact. Diversity and redundancy of components as impact important basis and main means to realize the robustness, restoration force, and adaptability of the system. Restoration force has a close relationship with robustness, which belongs to the broad sense urban robustness. In the narrow sense, the robustness is pure steady state, that is, it does not produce any changes, but in the broad sense, the robustness allows the city state to fluctuate in a small range and around its original steady case, presenting a stability of dynamic changes. Uh, it says this is my presentation. Thank you all. Yeah, maybe we'll continue to the second one uh, presented by Yang Fan. Sure, so I'll just uh, pull up the second presentation in a second. Yeah, thank you. It's my first time to use the pre-recording for a presentation in my career. Management and coastal urban transformation towards resilience and sustainable development growth. I'm Li Yangfan from China, the state key laboratory of marine. I think there's some problems about the presentation, right? Of because it's a 360 video, that's why I just I'll just try to figure something out. Maybe um I can share my screen, right? So I also have a recording of Yes, yes, maybe it will work better. It's it was for a uh, young fan Li. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Because I also find the same problem uh, at the beginning, then I solved the problem of his presentation. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good chair. Yeah. And then here. Yeah. It works, right? Yes, good. Yes, very good. Thank you. About yeah. yeah. integrated ocean management and coastal urban transformation towards resilience and sustainable development growth. I'm Li Yangfan from China, the state key laboratory of marine environmental science college of environment and ecology, Xiamen University. My topic includes two parts. One is resilience framework. The other is best practice. First one, resilience framework. Globally, coastal systems are undergoing profound, rapid, and undesirable environment change driven by the combined consequences of climate change, coastal development pressures, and pollution. What is resilience? You can find the concept from Carl Cook at Stockholm Resilience Center, Sweden. It orders resilience is about cultivating the capacity to sustain development in the face of expected and surprising change in the diverse pathways of development and the potential threshold between them. You can also look 
the cycle of the adaptive change by Holling. This is a very famous cycle to explain the resonance. You can find the four stages of the system evolution, growth, conservation, release, and reorganization. And the resonance type are classified by physical financial resonance, social and institutional resonance, and ecological resonance. Our team also gives the framework of coastal resonance, land, water, biodiversity, natural. We are focusing on a new resonance paradigm, including coastal urban land use and land cover chain and environmental effects and early warning coastal special vulnerability resonance and ecological governance. Based on the SDG sustainable development goals nexus transition towards the world logic where the economy service society can be achieved so that it evolves within the same operating space of the planet. Part two is case studies. First study I will show you the high level panel for a sustainable ocean economy. This high level panel was comprised by 40 president or prime minister of coast countries work also includes the United Nations special memory for the ocean. This panel patronizing both pragmatic ocean solutions in governance, technology and finance supporting the sustainable development goals for a better future, creating a new relationship between humanity and ocean, allowing us to protect, produce, and prosper. They lead the top scientists from world generates a Topic of new papers include to maintain data equity management. The blue paper is called Target, Target, the Nectar of the Ocean. One of the blue papers in the Great Ocean. We need also for Jim Brunner from Hawaii, Professor Penny Hong from Columbia University here in Japan. And Mary Boyle, the Dean, the big blue paper, the whole idea. Is the other two five case studies work. Here is Summer, my city, is also given in the level of the very close Thank you. 
conniving, the idea of living with potions below the You can find more and you read the full table, English version, Spanish version, so and the three song left. We also published one natural charge and evolution paper of the blue paper, which is the latest blue paper, and then the central blue amount in the paper. Better governance, the world's UN, SDG, and the sustainable ocean colony, the IOM. Integrated Ocean Mountain is in policy, a condition based as I mentioned, not to propose, not aim to issue a sustainable revision of our way to the future. A modern case study is in Kansas, which has closed the frontier and the reform frontier in China. The southern new and the sustainable development goals based social ecological indicators and assessment of living areas. We did a framework based on SDG review and then the order of the same action through the UN to publish this work in the order part.
Yeah, thank you very much, Yang Fan. The voice is not so good. Yeah, sounds so good, yeah. Uh, maybe we'll continue to the third presentation from Anna. Bonjour, je me présente, Anne Catherine Chardon, enseignante chercheuse à l'ESPI, École supérieure des professions immobilières à Paris. Je remercie l'organisation de la quatrième conférence internationale ICASU euh, qui nous permet d'échanger sur ce grand thème de la ville euh, exposée au risque. Pour ma part, je participerai au débat euh, au travers euh, du thème donc, euh, intitulé « La vulnérabilité à la résilience urbaine, une approche transversale d'un habitat complexe exposé au risque euh, » dont l'approche sera essentiellement territoriale, hein, orientée sur la ville et le logement. Euh, et qui euh, permettra de soulever des questions, euh, de proposer des réflexions avant tout, hein, afin de, de participer au débat que nous aurons dans le cadre de cette, de cette session. Alors, je vous retrouverai vis visuellement à la fin de ce diaporama, euh, afin de ne pas masquer du texte. Penser la ville résiliente, c'est d'abord réfléchir à la ville vulnérable. Si on a pu le constater, la crise mondiale donc, engendrée par la Covid-19 a obligé les villes à réagir promptement face à cette aléa sanitaire, hein, afin de mettre en place les politiques et mesures nécessaires au développement de leur résilience. Elle a aussi davantage exacerbé leurs faiblesses et facteurs de vulnérabilité, puisqu'en fait, elle ne les a pas révélés. Elle a également mis en avant les atouts forts, et ça c'est important, ça fait des leviers fondamentaux pour le développement de la, de la résilience. Hein. Et cette résilience, elle va s'appliquer sur une ville vulnérable que l'on considère avant tout comme un habitat humain urbain, entendu comme un contexte et système de vie multidimensionnel hein, qui résulte de la volonté de l'exercice d'habiter le territoire, hein, au-delà de l'occuper, d'y résider, et cet habitat se construit bah, au gré des interactions entre une société et son territoire, hein, ce qui oblige bien évidemment à une approche systémique. Euh, la ville vulnérable, c'est aussi une ville qui fait peur hein, lorsqu'elle est euh, confrontée à un danger, euh, de telle manière même que certains euh, tentent de la fuir. Hein, ça a été le cas dans le, euh, en Europe hein, dans le, euh, le contexte Covid-19 du printemps dernier. Hein, les urbains, principalement euh, des mégapoles, ont fuit la ville vers des zones plus sécures, ce qui nous oblige donc euh, à avoir une approche intégrale de cette, de cette ville vulnérable afin de pouvoir construire sa résilience. La démarche méthodologique mise en place dans le cadre de la gestion du risque et de la crise vise principalement à développer des processus de résilience, à savoir mobiliser des atouts, des forces, pour mettre en place les outils, les mesures permettant d'absorber et intégrer les changements afin de s'adapter à la situation, d'enrayer la crise et de rétablir un équilibre, finalement un modus vivendi acceptable. La ville au temps du corona, c'est avant tout le bouleversement des relations aux principaux territoires de vie, ce qui nous amène à soulever des problématiques, à soulever des questions, notamment sur l'adaptabilité des territoires à toutes les échelles, depuis le logement jusqu'à la ville, mais également l'adaptabilité de toutes les fonctions de ces territoires, hein, et elles sont diverses, hein, depuis résider, s'approvisionner, se déplacer, se soigner, euh, se divertir, euh, et puis quid de la pertinence de ces territoires euh, quant à leur pouvoir de générer une sensation de bien-être, euh, quant au fait qu'ils puissent permettre d'habiter. Hein, et là, on s'interroge sur euh, la pertinence des métropoles, ou bien des territoires plus détendus seraient-ils finalement beaucoup plus prisés à partir de ce contexte Covid euh, Et puis donc, finalement, on s'interroge aussi sur les modèles urbains mise en place au cours des dernières décennies et les questionnements tournent autour de concepts centraux, la densité, les centralités, l'étalement urbain. En effet, dans ce contexte sanitaire adverse, à l'échelle du quartier, de la ville, des paradigmes se trouvent controversés 
comme la sectorisation géographique des bassins d'emploi non télétravaillables ou la carence en services et espaces verts de loisirs de proximité. En revanche, d'autres modèles, d'autres politiques de la ville démontrent au contraire toute leur pertinence, comme la mixité sociale, la mixité fonctionnelle, l'échelle locale de la gouvernance. À l'échelle du logement, les facteurs de vulnérabilité peuvent également être nombreux, principalement concernant les catégories socioprofessionnelles les moins pourvues économiquement, mais n'épargnant pas non plus des populations plus aisées, puisque finalement, depuis un an, on observe que le logement est devenu le lieu du tout, hein, révélant donc souvent ses limites quant au confort procuré, à la possibilité de l'habiter et ne pas seulement l'occuper, à la possibilité de s'y sentir bien. Et donc, on observe euh, une localisation parfois peu stratégique du logement au sein de la ville, hein, mais aussi au sein du logement, un surpeuplement, le manque de privacité, d'isolement, une confusion dans les usages, comme on peut l'observer sur les illustrations de cette diapo. Un territoire urbain également fondamental impacté par le contexte sanitaire est le bureau, car il est remis en cause par le développement du télétravail, bah, obligeant alors à s'interroger sur l'avenir du marché de l'immobilier tertiaire d'une part, mais aussi d'autre part sur l'organisation des ménages qui doivent apprendre à gérer la multifonctionnalité simultanée au sein des logements. Et les chiffres présentés hein, montrent à quel point le télétravail s'est développé et dans quelle mesure les gens souhaitent continuer à télétravailler, ce qui indéniablement impacte le fonctionnement de la société au quotidien. On comprend alors que des mécanismes de résilience doivent se développer afin de s'adapter aux différentes situations décrites, et principalement à l'échelle du quartier et de la ville, notamment en facilitant la construction de modèles urbains qui replacent le bien-être et la qualité de vie des habitants au cœur des préoccupations. Pour cela, comme on peut le voir sur, sur le graphique, différents outils urbanistiques peuvent être mobilisés tout en adaptant les échelles et modes de gouvernance aux décisions et interventions mises en place. On voit là quelques propositions d'intervention, notamment au travers de l'urbanisme tactique, hein, avec le développement de pistes cyclables, temporaires mais qui peuvent devenir pérennes, ou encore la construction d'éco-quartiers, ou la mise en place du modèle de la ville du quart d'heure promu par l'urbaniste Carlos Moreno. À l'échelle du logement, des modalités de résilience doivent également être développées, principalement au sein de quatre domaines associés au lieu de vie. Sa localisation au sein de la ville, et pourvu qu'elle soit stratégique, sa spatialité, à savoir la qualité des espaces, compris des murs vers l'intérieur, mais aussi la technologie développée au sein du logement, principalement la connectivité, les outils de la domotique, et puis finalement la sociabilité permise par le logement, que ce soit au travers de la mise en place d'une mixité fonctionnelle verticale, mais aussi de par la prise en compte d'espaces mutualisés au sein des immeubles, et puis bien évidemment, la mixité des typologies des ménages résidents ou bien au sein du même bâti ou euh, sur un secteur de proximité. Pour illustrer certains des axes de résilience développés à l'échelle du logement, on peut observer sur cette diapositive un appartement modulable, offrant ainsi des espaces flexibles, mais aussi un exemple de mixité verticale mise en place sur un secteur universitaire à Bordeaux et qui propose des locaux pour l'Université de Bretagne Noire, un restaurant universitaire, des espaces sportifs de loisirs et une résidence pour étudiants-chercheurs étrangers. Et finalement, une proposition de mutualisation des espaces pour les résidents d'un projet développé à Marseille qui se partageront un espace de coworking, une salle de sport, un restaurant et 120 logements suréquipés destinés à la génération Y. Finalement, pour conclure, une question probablement sans réponse tranchée peut être posée. 
de la ville à l'habitat urbain, le cheminement est-il utopique bon, On a pu comprendre hein, que le risque zéro n'existe pas, donc il importe de développer des sociétés, des habitats urbains résilients, et cette résilience, elle doit être abordée de manière systémique et transversale dans tous les domaines, en intervenant sur l'ensemble des fonctions et acteurs de la ville. Euh, cette ville, euh, dont certains modèles présentent des vertus, mais aussi des limites hein, dans un contexte sanitaire adverse. Et c'est alors que les villes moyennes, les petites villes, ont peut-être leur mot à dire, ont peut-être une chance, hein, euh, notamment au travers du développement du télétravail, euh, du télétravail qui, bien sûr, euh, nous amène à parler du logement, ce fameux lieu du tout, hein, qui participe de la construction de la société, de la fabrique de la ville. C'est l'élément fondamentalement central de notre habitat, hein, le territoire intime de référence euh, qui se doit d'offrir des conditions qualitatives optimum afin de permettre l'épanouissement individuel et familial. Et finalement, bah, le contexte Covid-19 euh, n'a fait que renforcer la prise de conscience évidente du besoin d'habiter, c'est-à-dire au-delà de résider, hein, euh, se sentir bien sur son territoire, pouvoir s'y développer euh, et de telle manière euh, que l'on puisse mettre en place progressivement euh, des processus participatifs de construction d'un habitat urbain sûr, sain, protecteur, soucieux du bien-être durable des usagers. Alors, avec une petite pointe d'humour, je conclue cette présentation en vous partageant quelques références bibliographiques. Et je vous remercie en vous souhaitant une enrichissante expérience au sein de cette quatrième conférence internationale ICASO. And uh, thank you very much, Anne. Yeah, and um, and um, I also, uh, yeah, I also would like to um back to my screen, then to um have a very short uh introduction of Anna's presentation. It's in English, so because I think uh, some of us. Um, do not have too much knowledge about French. So I copied this um, translation of Anna's um, presentation from the conquest and proceedings. So here's a general idea about uh, Anna's um, uh, idea about her um, presentation entitled with uh, From Vulnerability to Urban Resilience, a Cross-Cutting Approach to a complex habitat exposed to risks. I think we can see some uh, simple words from her presentation. For example, habitat, and human, the risks, the yeah, urban. I think it's, uh, the French word maybe have some similar spell rules with English. So yeah, we can have general uh, understand that. So you can also find uh, this an uh, abstract uh, from the pre uh, proceedings, yeah, proceedings, yeah, of the conference. So here, I think it's just a very short um, introduction. You can have a very quick look. So then, uh, I think we have almost uh, ten minutes left. So may maybe we could have some very um short or general discussions or inputs about these three um, presentations. Maybe um before that, maybe um is there any um questions from our audience? Or from our participants, right? I don't know. And okay. Miss Kayam or some, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, the concept of habitat, uh, it's a concept, a very interesting, interesting uh, concept because uh, it uh, demonstrates that you are not only uh, occupying a place but mm -hmm. you have to live there. You have to be comfortable there. You can project your life from this place. 
uh, and in all uh, the dimensions, uh, that means social dimension, economic dimension, um, a, a liberal dimension, uh, demographic dimension, cultural dimensions. So uh, to have it, to have it, uh, if the word doesn't exist in English as a, as a verb, uh, it's different from to occupate or to live there. It, it's, it's a more general, more global concept where uh, you occupy the place, but the habitat permits you to have contact with neighbors, with other peoples, contact with your, with your natural context, with your urban context, and you have to be comfortable in this context. And not all the place in the city, all, uh, or uh, not all the housing, propose you all this, um, all this positive context. So uh, for me, uh, yes, I prefer, I prefer uh, use the concept of habitat than the concept of city. I prefer urban habitat than city because it's uh, the city, it's um, the concept of city it's, it's it's a cold concept, yeah, and yeah. it's a neutral concept. Habitats have a, a human dimension that the city perhaps doesn't have. Yeah. So, what's your thoughts or input from Yang Fan? Yeah, or our other participants? Yeah. Please. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, I think uh, the uh, coastal urban area is a very uh, complex system. Uh, in this system, we have uh, land, ocean, human, coupling system. So uh, the resilience system in coastal area is very, very complex. How can we uh, use the, it's hard, it's hard to find the key indicators in the resonance evolution of this complex system. I think this is the, the hard work and the key issue. And how can we uh, find this key indicators and how can we evaluate the resilience indicators or the indicators to push or to drive the resilience evolution. I think this is the, uh, is a problem. As the, the first presenter said that uh, he told, told us, uh, us theory, theory framework. How can we do the quantitative, quantitative research in this resilience evolution? And how to, can we use the uh, resilience theory into the practice management practice? I think that's also a big challenge for us. That's all, thank you. Yeah, thank you. The, any comments or ideas from our audience or questions are also welcome. In the chat. Uh, I, put, I put in the chat a link to a recent published book uh, about risk management and where the concept of habitats is developed here. Ah, nice. Yeah, I'll copy this link. Yes, and, and it's, it's, a free, it's a free book. So very good. practical. Yeah, in, English. In. in the chat, oh, we have English. another question 
from the audience. Yeah. Pat. You're welcome. Can you see the chat, Jane? Professor Shane. Yeah. Sorry? Okay, I have two questions for the first presenter. Um, how does historical heritage reflect resilience? And could you give some, sorry, the first presenter was, wasn't here. <laughs> yeah, because Ms. Zhang was not here. So I think um, he will not answer the questions. So um, the second question is, oh, sorry to uh, Zi Yuan. Yes. Sorry, because the first presenter was not here. Yeah. He's not here. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can uh, leave these questions to by writing email to him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, some new questions from our audience. We only have two minutes left. Yeah, please. Please raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um I would say uh, thank you very much for um participating in this session, chair discussion. I think um you can find our um here. Yangfan and uh, Anna, do you want to, is that possible to share your uh, slides or pre-records to our audience? Or if you want to have um, their presentations, all the audience can write an email to me, then I can forward your email to our presenter. Then you can contact to them directly to get the response or comments from their uh, own. So uh, again, okay, yes. here. Thank you very much thank for you very participating. Much. Thank, thank you very much for the yeah. invitation. Thank you very uh, much for yeah, my, contact. My, yeah. The and the last question is that. The yeah. recording of my the voice is not so good. If you have interest, you can uh, send me email or send me email for the pre-recording or presentation PowerPoint. That's OK. The, the main contents of the test in, includes in the text, uh, in the PowerPoint. I think that that's a good. The voice is not so good. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it's a, maybe the problem of the technical uh, connection, an uh, internet connection. I think it's not your pre-recording. Anyway, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very uh, much. See you. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.